Hello, welcome to Miss Rose's story time. I know it's been quite a while. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I just wanted to thank you. I'm sorry it's been since October. I hope you all have had a wonderful Christmas and a Happy New Year. And it snowed today here in Southeast Georgia in Twin City. That was exciting. I'm carrying on with Carry On Mr. Bowitch. We're going to be in Chapter 7. This story is dedicated to Trey Smith in Swainsboro, Georgia. Hey, Trey! And um, I just wanted to let you know that we had pecan harvesting season here. And I'm sorry it's been so such a long time, but I've had several people ask me if I was going to start up story time again. So here I am. And remember, if you write a story or illustrate, I would like you to send it to P.O. Box 332 in Twin City and on Old Swainsboro Road, Twin City, Georgia, 30471. That's P.O. Box 232. That way, um, I can look at your story or your illustrations and decide if I will share them. Also, if you'd like a story time dedicated to you, let me know your name and where you're from. And I will. And let me know what you'd like to hear, and I will consider it. All right, let's begin with Chapter 7, Carry On, Mr. Bowitch. Let me put this right here in the holder. I hope everyone's doing well. Even if you just want to write me, that's fine too. All right. Carry on, Mr. Bowitch. You can get it from the library or Amazon. And let's go to chapter seven. All right, if you want to remember what we've talked about and read thus far, you can go on YouTube and click the chapter you've missed. All right, chapter seven, the almanac. What is an almanac? We're gonna find out. Before winter came again, Nate could find anything in the shop as quickly as Mr. Ropes and Mr. Hodges. But Sam still dropped in to walk, talk. Sometimes Dr. Bentley dropped in too. Ben Meeker was lo lounging in the chandler one day when Dr. Bentley stopped by. When the roly-poly minister had gone, Ben said, really pulling means like he was oh. large, had said, bright fellow, powerful, bright, knew, knew 20 languages when he was only 25. Wow, I would like to know that many languages. That would be neat. I was saying just today when I was shopping, it would be really neat to know the different languages. Okay, so no brighter than you'd have been, though, if you weren't beclaimed. So he's talking to him about, you know, him having to work as an apprentice instead of going to college, I guess. The rest of that day, Nate found it hard to forget Ben Meeker. Most of the time, though, he did not waste much time thinking of Ben's words. All day, he was too busy in the chandlery or running errands. At night, he was too busy writing down everything he had learned that day. That's good to take notes. It helps remember. One day, an errand took him to a long building called a rope walk. Hmm. He watched the rope makers walking backwards as they twisted the fibers into yarn, the yarn into strands, and the strands into rope. The rope makers were proud of this wor their work. Most important thing on the ship, they said. You can't sail a ship without cordage. Cordage is another word for rope. That night, Nate started a notebook on everything about rope. Once an errand took him to a sail loft, he watched the sail makers cutting heavy canvas into strips and sewing it back together again. Makers makes the sails stronger, they told him. Most important thing on a ship, the sails. If it weren't for sails, how would you get anywhere? Nate added more to his notebook, everything about sails. Another errand took him to Rux Greek 
Creek, Rux Creek, called Knocker's Hole because all day you could hear the thump, thump, thump of the chalkers' mallets chalking the scenes of ships. Most important work on the ship, they told them, if a ship isn't watertight, where'd you be? Mm, good point. Nate added more notes, this time about chalking a ship. When Sam dropped in again, Nate showed him his new notebook. Is there anything else to know about ships? Sam chuckled, lad, you haven't even begun. Navigation, that's something else again. What to learn, want to learn it? I reckon I could teach you. So the winner, Nate, was 13. He started a new notebook, navigation, N-A-V-I-G-A-T-I-O-N, navigation, T-I-O-N has a shun sound. Nan Nathaniel Bowich, his book. By spring, the notebook was filled. Sam looked through in it one day. It's all down there, lad. Get in it your get it in your head and you'll have it memorization like god says to hide your his word in your heart so you may not sin against thee another thing about memorization if we know god's word and we might be somewhere that we don't have a bible with us the holy spirit can bring it to our remembrance and we will know his will and his way for us by his word okay Where'd I go? <laughs> okay, there we go. What else can I learn? Sam shook his head and chuckled. Blessed if I know you're, you've enlightened all the cargo in my head. <laughs> Master Rope strolled back to Nate's desk. Nate, run over to my house and look up surveying in the chamber's cyclopedia, will you? Hetty will show you where it is. Write down what it says about the start of surveying. You'll find everything you need on the desk. Nate hurried over to Mr. Rope's home. A cyclopedia? What in the world was that? Well, Hetty would show him. Soon he was sitting at the desk in the library with four big books in front of him. Emperor Chamber Cyclopedia of Universal Dictionary of Arts and Sciences. He turned the pages. Everything was here. Everything. I'd like to begin at A, he thought, and read it right through to Z. But now he must find out about surveying. The next thing Nate knew, Mr. Ropes was striding into the library calling, Nerd! What in the name of sense happened to you? Did you go to sleep? No, sir. I'm copying what it says about surveying. But there's a good bit to look up. It's a little hard to tell where the start of it is. I've looked up trigonometry, and that's the kind of mathematics they use. I've looked up the theodolites, and that's the kind of telescope they use. Then there's something about finding your position by sighting a star, so I got into astronomy. I can't tell yet where surveying starts, with astronomy and trigonometry, or the theodolite, or... Nate Bowich! Mr. Ropes threw himself in a chair and laughed. Ho, 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 ho! until he wiped his eyes. Where did it start in that country? That's all I wanted to know. Give me that book a minute. See right here, it says that surveying probably began in Egypt. So I was right. Nate said, oh, that's all you wanted to know. <laughs> Mr. Ropes was still chuckling. That was all. I'm sorry I put you to all that work for nothing. Nate grinned. It wasn't work. It was fun. May I keep the notes I made? Of course. If you want to look up some more things in chambers, help yourself any time. But, he smiled, after the channel closes, eh? 
Not in the middle of the afternoon. Mr. Ropes got up, still chuckling. You better run along now. It's supper time. What? Nate jumped up and started out the window. Why, I, I've been here all afternoon. You certainly have. I'm sorry. I'll finish up my work tonight, Mr. Ropes said. No need to do that. But after supper, Nate went back to the channeling to finish the work he had not done. Wow, that's integrity right there. It was an unexpectedly warm night for early spring. He left the upper half of the Dutch door open. He was busy at work when, he, when a voice called, Nate! He looked up. Liza was standing in the door. He smiled and hurried to let her in. Liza hesitated. It's all right to stop a minute to talk to you? Mary always says we mustn't tag in here and bother you when you're busy. It's all right, Liza. He loves his sister. They talked a while, then silence fell. Funny, I had so much to tell you, Liza said. Now I can't seem to think of it. I miss you, Nate. I, I, when I go tell you a joke and you're not there, I miss you, most awful. Suddenly Liza wheeled and ran out of the door. Nate knew she was crying. His throat ached. A good thing have taught me that boys don't blubber, he muttered. He went back to his work. After he finished his bookkeeping, he started a new notebook, The Practical Surveyor, Nathan Nathaniel Bowich. County of Exus and State of Massachusetts, New England, March the 17th, 1787. When Sam saw the new notebook, he said, Now that's something I can help you with, too. Surveying's a lot like navigation, only it's a heap easier. You're sure it's easier? Sam chuckled. Yes, sir. When you set up your theolite good and level with your plumb line, the ground hold still. It won't heave and pitch like the deck of a ship when you're trying to shoot the sun. Yes, sir. Surveying's lots easier. You'll get along fine with it. Nate was still working on surveying when he got his first glimpse of an algebra book. That night, for the first time, he studied all night. The sky was paling in the east when he started another notebook, Algebra and Mathematics, Nathaniel Bowich, his book. Every time he had a chance, he borrowed the algebra book to copy it into his notebook. Between times, he copied everything on mathematics he could find in the encyclopedia. Then he studied everything he could find on astronomy over again. You see, when you know how to read, there's nothing you can't learn. And you know how to read and comprehend. The knowledge is limitless. It's important to read 30 minutes every day so you can get stronger in your reading. 20 minutes stays the same. Less than 20 makes it not as strong. So let's use that reading muscle and read 30 minutes every day. He was 16 the summer he figured how to make an almanac. He felt a tingle go up his backbone. Just to think, a man could sit right here and figure out when the moon would rise every night next month or next year or ten years from now. He could figure out the way the sun would act. He could figure... Ben Meeker shuffled into the chandlery one day. What's that you're figuring on? The almanac for the years from 1789 to 1823. Ben sniffled, do tell, and what's your almanac going to have in it? Just the regular things, the sun's rising, setting, delication, amplitude, place in the epileptic. Ben sniffed, You're no, you've no need to make fun of me. Nate stared, but I'm not making fun. You asked me what is in the almanac, and I was telling you. A strange voice said, Pardon me, may I see your almanac? Of course, sir. Nate handed his almanac to the stranger and turned back to Ben. It's just straight mathematics, Ben. You see, Ben threw up his hands. Don't tell me. Save it for them as had 
a chance to go to school. He shuffled out. Nate turned to the stranger. Something for you, sir? Yes, a compass. Just a small one, please, for a child. We live in Cambridge. My little daughter says the streets get her mixed up. Cambridge, where Harvard was. Nate brought him the compass and gave him his change. At last, the man looked up from the almanac. How old are you? Sixteen, sir. Oh, so thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, three years later. But, but this is amazing. You ought to be, have you ever thought of going to Harvard? Turn the page. Page 16. I can't leave here, sir. I am indentured, the man frowned. But that's, that's, he stopped. He wrote on a slip of paper and gave it to Nate. If anything happens that you can leave here, say within a year or two, write to me. I like to tutor for my children. I like a tutor for my children. I'm sure you could do that and go to Harvard too. An almanac at 16. Four weeks after that, Nate used to imagine the letter he'd write. Dear Mr. Morris, I'm free now and can come to Cambridge and be a Harvard man. The thing that freed me from my indenture was... Nate's letter always stopped there. He couldn't think of anything that could happen to free him until he was 21 and that was still five years away. Sometimes he agreed with Ben. Nine years was a long time to sail by ash breeze. Well, that's it of chapter seven. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. Keep reading. I will be more consistent with story time. I have some friends that are gonna help me um, record and things with our my limitations out here in the country because so many have missed it and um, I'm encouraged and I hope this encourages you to read and to write to me and thank you for your support. Please like, share, and subscribe with To Miss Rose's Storytime. Thank you.